Yes, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome to the third lecture in the second block. Um, let me give a short introduction. Every one of us uses Google or one of the other search engines most, uh, most days in his, day, in his life. And I believe no one of us has ever thought about what can be made out of the search queries you enter there, what um, any adversary or any honest company, I suppose they, are, they exist, can do with them. Now, today with us is Robert, and uh, he's been doing some statistical an uh, analysis of some search queries. Well, some in this case means 34 millions. And yeah, he's going to give us a brief talk about what you can do in terms of profile building out of them. Enjoy. Well, thank you. Um, I actually expected less people here because there's a so-called AFA meeting in parallel, but well, it's fine for me, so it seems that you're really interested in the topic. Um, well, the talk is named uh, Mining Search Queries and is basically about finding interesting additional knowledge in search query logs. Um, in particular, I focus on the AOL data set of search queries, which was released in, well, 2006 and is reasonable big for that purpose. So this is the agenda for the talk. Um, first, I will introduce you to uh, the AOL data set, to the origin and to the aftermath of the publication. Uh, then I will give you a short introduction uh, to data mining, just a definition. Then we will go into detail with the general statistics of the data set. I will tell you what search trend mining is and we will show you some well interesting queries which really change significantly over time. And well, probably the most interesting part for you, um, user categorization and identification, well which is basically classifying uh, users into some categories or even identifying users only by their search queries. Well, and at the end I will summarize the whole talk. Um, okay, this is basically the timeline of the publication. I tried to reconstruct it. Um, at the end of July, AOL intentionally published uh, some real-world search query logs from their AOL search engine. Well, it is reasonable big. It is about uh, 37 million records and around, well, 600,000 users. Well, and soon after the publication, AOL received some serious negative feedback from the media because well, despite anonymization of the data set, um, there is still lots of private information in, the, in those queries. So AOL was forced to take the data offline and even a public excuse did not relax the situation because, well, the web never forgets. The data set was soon mirrored all over the internet and is still available. Um, so as a consequence, the responsible researchers got dismissed. I think, well, three persons had to leave the company. And, well, furthermore, AOL got sued multiple times by their own users for the publication of their private search queries. Um, this is basically the timeline, but I want to focus uh, on the data set itself on the, in this talk. So, well, this is the URL where you can download the data set. It links some mirrors of the data. Um, the zip version is about half a gigabyte. You simply download it and, well, unzip it. Then you have the full text version, which is around two gigabyte. So not so big. Uh, it contains about uh, 36 million records. These are single search queries. And but only 34 million unique ones. So there are some duplicates. Duplicates are search queries with the same time, the same uh, query content, and 
submitted by the same users. And I assume that those queries are neglectable. Um, okay, what you do is you would, uh, well, import the data in your favorite database system. This is just um, the format of the data. We have thir uh, 36 million records of this format. I took a, uh, two samples here. Um, this is basically tab delimited data. Uh, the first attribute is an anonymous user ID where, well, AOL substituted the <coughs> username, the AOL screen name with an anonymous ID. Then we of course have the uh, query content, which was typed into the search bar. And we have the time stamp when the query was submitted. And the last uh, two attributes are optional. Um, in case the user clicked on a search result, the rank of the result and the clicked your the domain part of the clicked URL is listed. So this is basically the structure. So and well AOL thought that this data is anonymized, but we will see actually it is not. Um, what do we want to do with that data? We want to do some data mining, finding some interesting knowledge on it. But what is data mining? Uh, in my eyes, data mining is the systematic extraction of significant patterns um, and valid, for novel, formerly unknown, potential useful knowledge, uh, usually in large data sets, because, well, otherwise it makes less sense. And you usually use statistical methods and, well, data mining techniques. And um, this is, the next slide is, well, a very common knowledge discovery procedure. Um, you usually start with flat files containing the records. Then you apply a so-called ETL process on the files. ETL means extraction, transformation, loading. Um, well, extraction could be that you select the, the attributes which you'd like to import in your database. Transformation might be that you have to convert some values into in the data set so that it fits into your database schema. Well, and loading is simply the database import. Um, this all ends up with a working copy of the data in your database, sometimes with metadata. Well, and before you start to apply your uh, statistical analysis and data mining algorithms, you usually select subset of, subsets of the data uh, in, in data mods, which are, well, some kind of views on your data. Um, furthermore, you usually create some indices on the data because, well, to speed up things. And then it is possible to well, derive statistics, derive reports, or derive even models of your data. Uh, the whole thing ends up with some human interaction where the knowledge is interpreted. So if you want to make a decision out of the data, you always have some, some human factor. Um, okay. So... Let's go into detail with the statistical analysis. This is what you will see in the next slides. Basically, we go through all uh, dimensions of the data. We look at the distribution by time, by query, by user, and by item rank. Um, well, let's see. Um, the first plot is basically the frequency plot of uh, the overall data. It is, well, you can see it is over a period of three months. Well, it starts pretty perfect. You can even see some weekly cycles, but then there is a decrease and, 
Well, and suddenly there is a, a, a sudden, a sudden decline. Um, it is on March, uh, on May the 16th, I think, where, well, enormous, as where the query frequency declines enormously. Um, we will see that this results in some problems in our later analysis. Um, okay, but this plot is pretty perfect. It is the frequency plot by hour of day. You might have seen that before in your own web server logs that, well, the query frequency is not um, the same, it's not equally distributed over the day. Uh, the minimum is, of course, in the nighttime hours and there is a certain increase uh, during the office hours and the maximum is reached, well, early evening hours, I would say. Well, this one is, is pretty perfect in my eyes. Um, well, th things seem to be simple, but if you go into detail, they are not. Um, what I did here is I plotted the difference to the hourly frequency mean of some selected queries. Well, I, well, basically this should end up into a straight line uh, if all queries were equally distributed, but they are not. So values above zero mean that this query is overrepresented in uh, that hour, and values below zero mean that this query is underrepresented. And what you see is, well, the query for adult entertainment um, is overrepresented in the nighttime hours and, well, underrepresented uh, in the afternoon, I would say. Whereas the query for the Bank of America, well, people are doing their online banking or whatever, um, is overrepresented in the office hours. Well, and what else do we have? Oprah, which, which is a very popular talk show in the United States. And Oprah has a peak. Uh, well, at 17 o'clock, I would say. Well, and I would bet my ass that this is the broadcasting time of the TV show. Uh, so you can investigate in that. Um, okay, the next plot is the frequency distribution by uh, the user ID. Um, at, so you can see that we have basically 600,000 distinct user IDs. Um, be careful with the y-axis. The y-axis is log scale. This will happen very, very often in the next slide, so be aware of it. That basically means that the distance on the, on the y-axis is actually much larger than it appears. Um, well, and what you notice is that the largest portion of users, um, well, submit only very few queries, and the smallest portion of the user submits the largest portion of the queries. Actually, we have, there's one user ID submitting quarter a million queries, well, and at the beginning I thought, well, what's that, maybe a bot or a script crawling AOL, but it turns out, well, if you look at the query distribution of that user, the, the, this user is searching for all kinds of topics and it's searching all the time, daytime, nighttime, day by day, <laughs> sessions in parallel. So this might be um, an account with multiple users.